Netflix is known for scooping up series from other countries and buying the distribution rights to show them in different locations. Well, The Tourist has already aired in Australia and other parts of the world, but it's now coming to Netflix in the U.S. for the first time. So should this Jamie Dornan-led thriller be on your binge list? When a man wakes up in the Australian outback with no memory, he must use the few clues he has to discover his identity before his past catches up with him. So we're getting season one right now on Netflix in the U.S., and then at the end of February, we get season two. Now, both of these have already aired elsewhere, but if you're like me and you live in the U.S., we're arriving late to the party. So Jamie Dornan and Danielle McDonald star in this Australian set mystery where Dornan has lost his memory and he's working to figure out who he is while others appear to be after him. Now, the series starts off with a very exciting and nail-biting action sequence. And then from there, we're thrust into the mystery. Now, McDonald is a probationary constable, so she's just learning the ropes, but is the one to get Dornan's case. And despite being only six episodes, this packs in a ton of complicated twists and turns that then create a pretty engaging mystery. Dornan does an excellent job at playing a confused and semi-tortured soul as he gets tiny glimpses of memories, but he has zero context to what they mean. And this works great for us as an audience because we get to be just as perplexed as he is, never being able to fully trust what he conjures up as scattered memories. Now, as Dornan explores the tiny clues that he can uncover, we're introduced to more and more characters. And some are included to just have like a little bit of levity. Like there's his B&B owner's husband. Now, he's totally deaf, and the show takes advantage of that to create some lighthearted dialogue moments. But for the most of this, it does have a more serious tone. Now, the setting is very rural Australia. We're not shown any large towns or cities. I mean, most look like they've been abandoned and have sort of the one street setting that you'd see in some old Western movie. Now, this helps to reinforce the isolation and the loneliness that Dornan feels, even when he is around people. And because he has zero clue about who he is, he also has no idea who can be trusted. Now, this makes for some great plot complications, which sometimes lead to very tense interactions. And I appreciate how the show uses the locations to further the plot. I mean, vast areas of nothingness create separation from connection and then build daunting obstacles that the characters have to navigate through. And some of the landmarks, they're also stunning. I mean, so there is a bunch of visual interest that's added when we go to just some scenic locations. But to contrast that, the plainness of some of the settings matches Dornan's memory. It's barren and empty and devoid of anything meaningful. Now, despite the excitement of the opening scene, a lot of the show has a slower pacing to it that allows the clues and the questions to be drawn out and then pondered. Not everything is slowed down. I mean, there are action scenes that are sprinkled throughout that can be tense, anxious, and even downright bloody. But the mix of tones and the speeds help to keep this interesting, and it made me want to continue to binge the episodes. Now, something that I'm not sure totally works for me in this is right around the halfway mark, we're introduced to a couple of new characters, and some of the storyline begins to go a bit off the rails. And it feels like all this just comes right out of left field. But there are reasons and answers, so at least it's not some silly tangent that has zero purpose. And for me, probably the most captivating episode is number five. This is where we begin to get some solid answers. But these also raise more questions. And the way the episode is executed, it's riveting because of how convoluted and confusing the visuals become. I mean, imagine that we're being given almost all of the answers, but we're still only getting them in pieces and completely out of order and still without context. I mean, the more we're shown, the more sense it does begin to make, but there's still mystery that's left open so that the final episode isn't a waste of time. Now, the final moments of the season, I think they'd be very frustrating if I didn't already know that there was a second one that's coming. I mean, it's not fully a cliffhanger, but some actions are set in place that I want to know how the consequences are resolved. Now, for as great as Dornan is in this, it really only works because of his dynamic with McDonald. They have wonderful timing with each other, creating this cadence that feels real and relatable as they each search for the right words to match their emotions. They stutter or stammer, I mean, not in an aggravating way, but in a manner that illustrates their confusion or their bewilderment. And I really enjoyed the charisma that they share, each becoming very endearing, and while they don't necessarily always get along, they do work well together. 
And it's nice that there's a couple of mysteries at play in the story, each with a different degree of seriousness. Now, one of the storylines that I initially thought was probably the main arc, it wasn't as important. So if it had been the true central mystery, it would have been disappointing. Thankfully, though, there are a lot of shocking situations and actions that hold some of the intrigue close to the vest so that when reveals come, they carry a massive weight and should catch it completely by surprise. Now, I don't think this is one of the greatest mysteries ever, but Dornan and McDonald give awesome performances that sucked me in with their earnestness. The dynamic gets strained, but relatable, and I was just as intent on finding out Dornan's identity and his story as he was. Some areas of the plot feel a bit off-kilter, like the show is experimenting by including some quirky and ungrounded vibes to a more serious and very grounded premise. The pacing is sometimes on the slower side, but includes enough variation to keep the story moving and engaging, and I was definitely captivated by the mysterious tone. By itself, the ending of this first season wasn't wholly satisfying, but because I know for certain a second season is already finished, it does alleviate some concerns while also whetting my appetite for additional intrigue. There's sex, maybe a tiny bit of nudity, a lot of profanity, and some brutal violence. I give season one of The Tourist three and a half out of five couches. So I'm looking forward to seeing season two when it drops on Netflix at the end of February. Have you seen any good mysteries lately? I'd love to hear about what you watched in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.